You are a horrible man. You are a horrible man. Three months ago, uh, you gave me a great idea. What was that? Bumper. I completely agree with you with using bitches when they're being bitches and kicking them to the curb. Everybody should listen to exactly what you say, and if they do follow it to the T, then it'll work, period. That's it. I've got three words for those stupid men out there that still decide that they're going to get married to these women. Prenup, prenup, prenup. Your open-mindedness and your intelligence is just so sexy. Tom, you, 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 you explaining it the way it's got to be explained. It's simple. If they ain't going to pick up, they're not going to clean, and I'm busting my ass bringing, you know, the money home, you got, you got to make me some food. You got to take care of me. If you're not going to do it, then that's right. We shouldn't get married. Feminist has a lot of negative connotations, but you're actually more pro-women than you get credit I, for. I'm, America, I'm America's original feminist. You teach people to own their choices, be accountable, and be an independent member of society and not wait around for some guy to be a meal ticket and then be mad at him when he doesn't put the toilet lid down. Kevin, what did you want to say to Ellen? Hey, are you kidding me? This guy has so much of a pussy that he has his bitch wife calling his bitch for him? Is that, is hey, that it's him? great facts. There's a lot of women out there who would take a guy I, for great facts. I hear him. I hear him in the background. Put him on if he's such a man. Fine, here. Hello. Yeah, all right, there you are. Are you kidding me? You're a, such a pussy, dude. Get a job and find the women that will do more things to you than this woman could do to you tonight. Really? You think that's better than putting great food all over a woman's body and eating it off? Maybe this, you should put some food on your wife and then have sex with her. I got the the, the entourage guy beaten with my story. What do you do? I pretend to be Freddie Prince Jr. Now that's interesting because what's the last thing Freddie Prince Jr. did? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were joking that there was an all-white radio station. Is this really true? Oh, yes. All-white. What market do they think they're in? I wouldn't be caught. Sounds like Salt Lake City they think they're in. <laughs> I'm white. I would not be caught dead listening to an all-white radio station. I encourage my nephews to listen to you. They're, sometimes they don't really listen. They're 21 years old and they want a serious girlfriend. I'm like, no, 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 no. No girlfriends allowed. You need to listen to Tom Likas till you're at least 25. And then you can have a serious relationship. And then I guarantee you, you're not going to want to have one. You want chicks to be insecure about their appearance. You want chicks to be worried about whether they're thin enough, whether their boobs are big enough, whether they're good enough. That's what we want. No doubt, man. That's how you get your control. Bro. You want you want the, you want a world of you want a world of Queen Latifahs and other women who are large and in charge, walking around all sassy and confident. No, I want women who are completely, completely insecure. My dad listens to you. My brother listens to you. Actually, my whole family of men listen in at three p.m. The sex was okay. Like actually, with the legs on, we was able to do more positions, and it was like. A good thrusting position. Yeah, well, let's say let's say you uh, put her over on all threes. <laughs> like, yeah, like, how do you, how do you, what do you hold her up with? You have to put like a couple of phone books under there. What do you do? No, we actually did that position, and it worked. Like, she had, you she did. had good balance. Uh, uh, she had great balance. <laughs> she had great balance. From somewhere, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Friday with wide open telephones. Let me tell you before we get started here, Flash Friday is coming. It is coming. 
but um, it's going to be coming uh, just after Memorial Day this year because it's got ridiculous daylight savings time and it stretches back to the winter now. It's kooky, so we have not forgotten Flash Friday, and it is coming. And we will hammer you over the head, and we will announce it mercilessly uh, when the date is uh, determined. And it's coming up uh, just after Memorial Day, just so you know. Wide open telephones on the top like his show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. We had quite a week here. We talked about all the snooping into the UCLA Medical Center records of celebrities like Britney Spears, Farrah Fawcett, and the wife of Mrs. I'm sorry, the wife of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mrs. Arnold Schwarzenegger, also known as Maria Shriver. Yes, and uh, UCLA Medical Center knew about this a year ago, but they decided not to tell the patients because they didn't think it was important. (laughs) <laughs> nah, it's not important. So we talked about that, and we talked about people like you who have access to people's private records and what you've done with them. And uh, some of you sent me some stuff that uh, I deleted from my computer immediately. I did not want to admit I had. <laughs> some of you didn't call in. Some of you demonstrated. Yikes. Uh, We talked about the nude photos in the British tabloid News of the World of Heather Mills posing with and without her artificial leg. You can still see that on our website, by the way, blowmeuptom.com. There she is in one of the uh, photos. She's leaning up against the wall without the leg. And leaning up against the wall right next to her is the leg with with a high-heeled shoe on it. Very nice. Got a lot of calls about that. We talked about the study that claims that marriage creates seven hours of extra housework for women every week. But amazingly, it only saves men an hour of chores. And that six-hour difference is that's the stuff you guys argue about all the time. Things she thinks need to be done that you don't. And my answer to that is if you never got married, you you would not be having this conversation. Trust me, I know. Uh, In the studio this week, we had the young winos of L.A. The the group of guys who now in their 20s are getting together and uh, drinking and talking about wine with their friends. And, you know, wine is not just for their grandparents anymore. Wine bars are hot. And these guys came in and talked about that, which was cool. Uh, We talked about the uh, state lawmakers in Pennsylvania who are trying to, again, stupidly uh, get equal pay for women, despite the fact that men do riskier jobs. Women call in sick more often. Men do uh, uh, jobs that require more education. Uh, uh, Men work for 40 years straight. They die at their desk. They die five years younger than women. And despite evidence uh, to the contrary, that that women who do the same job as a man do get paid the same as long as they show up the same amount of hours and and are reliably there all the time, there's always a politician trying to make hay with this statistic that has been twisted and and perverted so much. It's it's disgusting. We talked about that. Uh, We talked about the guy who did what I warn you not to do, the guy from L.A. who saw a listing on Craigslist for a Russian woman who was looking for a green card marriage. She offered up to $15,000. I like the up to $15,000. Why would somebody say, you know what, I'll take ten? Up to $15,000. He didn't take the $15,000 in cash. Uh, she leased him a Mustang. And, of course, these morons don't think the FBI is reading Craigslist also. Idiots. So now they're both going to prison. Good riddance to bad rubbish. We talked about the feminist group at Penn State University that is trying to combat intoxicated sex. And then they're saying, if you can't do a Rubik's Cube, you're too drunk to have sex. 
Now, I don't know if that makes me drunk or stupid because I was never able to do a Rubik's Cube. Maybe I was just drinking for all of the 80s when the Rubik's Cube was out. I don't know. But uh, getting a woman drunk and then having sex with her is one of the joys of every man's life. Why, why would you want to give that up? We're not. And uh, finally, uh, my, my website uh, of the week. This is my favorite website right now. MissBimbo.com, the website where girls as young as nine years old sign up and try to become the coolest bimbo on the planet by uh, using diet pills and breast implants, and they try to earn bimbo dollars so they can go shopping at the bimbo mall. There's a lot of people who have concerns about their daughters playing this game. I say we need a steady supply of bimbos going way into the future. It's great that we can use the Internet uh, to train your daughter to become the trophy wife of the future. I think it's fantastic. So we talked about that as well. But anything goes here, anything at all, we can talk about anything that's on your mind, any of those things we talked about this week, anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not... We kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Is it understood? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today. Because years ago I thought you were the seat of Satan. And, uh, and I've come around. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephone. And let's go to your call. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hey, Tom. What's going on? I'm doing okay. Uh, I, I called on Wednesday, but you guys are already done talking about the all-white radio. K-white, yes. Yes. And uh, I don't understand how that could be considered racist or offensive to anyone i agree well, that well first of all i never said that yeah i understand but there are some because because in, k right? white k white replaced a radio station that was all black yes so i couldn't care less what i said was that it's a bad idea in a city that is a majority minorities I, I mean, I, I understand that, but I mean, I don't understand why it's okay to have black radios and, you know, and everybody. No one said it isn't okay. okay. You're not hearing me. I never said it wasn't okay. I said it was a stupid business decision. Yeah. I, and, and I understand that it won't work. You know what I mean? I right. Just don't, I just don't understand the people out there who could think that it's offensive or. Well, everybody who has called assumed that I was saying it was offensive. I never said that it's offensive. I said it's stupid. Now, if my radio station were in Salt Lake City, yeah. uh, an all-white radio station would make a lot of sense. <laughs> but the, but Los Angeles is not Salt Lake City. I understand that. And it hasn't been ever. Yeah. I mean, Los Angeles has always had a large number of... Uh, Mexicans and Mexican-Americans living in it. And uh, over the last hundred years, a uh, lot of African-Americans living in it. And uh, not only that, over the last 30, 40 years, a heavy component of Asians. Yeah. Uh, so a radio station that plays music by primarily white artists uh, without ever taking a breath to play something by somebody else is going to find themselves bankrupt. I understand that, and I'm sorry. And it turns out the, the the owner of this station happens to be the Mormon Church, and as you know, they didn't allow black people in until like the day before yesterday. So I'm not <laughs> surprised they would have an all-white radio station. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I misinterpreted what you were saying. You know, I, I, I believe in freedom. Uh, I believe, uh, certainly, I do a controversial radio program that a number of people object to. I believe everybody should be able to do the format they want to do. 
But as a radio professional, I have an opinion about what will work and what won't work. In July, I will celebrate my 20th anniversary of my first broadcast in Los Angeles. Very few people have ever had a 20th anniversary on the air in Los Angeles. Yeah. It's a, it's a brutal business. And I think I know better than most what works and doesn't work in my backyard. And a radio station where every artist is Warren Zevon and the Black Crows and Warren Zevon and the Rolling Stones and Warren Zevon and, <laughs> and, and, and the Bare Naked Ladies and Warren Zevon and Bruce Springsteen and Warren Zevon, uh, it ain't going to work. Yeah. And, 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 and come on, we live in a diverse city. And it, not only that, this is a radio station that's, that's calling itself, I think they're calling themselves World Class Rock. Yeah, but the only parts of the world that are represented are the white parts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, I I hope they I hope they keep doing it. I hope they spend years and millions and millions of dollars advertising it, because uh, that will be great for us. Another badly conceived radio station on the air in Southern California is fantastic for my business. So don't get me wrong. I hope it stays on the air forever. Yeah, of course. But it won't. <laughs> But these rubes come in here from Salt Lake City thinking they know, uh, you know, what uh, all these other cities are about. And they'll find out the hard way. Uh, maybe they'll drive the turnip truck out uh, along the 105 freeway one day and look for some Warren Zevon fans. <laughs> okay, well, well, thank you. For thank you. Get more into depth. Now you understand. I do understand. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. I've gotten at least half a dozen calls on the air from people who have misinterpreted what I said about this radio station. I mean, there are radio stations in Los Angeles like KJLH. Every artist is black. Every artist they play is black. And you know what? That's fine with me. Fine. There are radio stations. Every song they play is in Spanish. Okay. There are radio stations where everybody who's on the air is Korean. That's fine. And if somebody wants to do an all-white radio station, that's great. Here's the problem. There ain't as many white people in L.A. as there were when the Carpenters lived in Downey, okay? There just aren't. So I think it's a bad business decision. But I I'm not saying we should stop them or protest. I I quite the contrary. When they go on the air with their 0 0.8 or their 0 0.4, and then they spend millions of dollars on billboards and bus boards. And you'll have uh, pictures, you know, you'll have bus boards with pictures of Eric Clapton going through Compton and Inglewood. <laughs> They're going to find out the hard way that this is not going to work. Trust me when I tell you. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Kevin on the Tom Likas show. Father, long time, first time. Thank you. I love your uh, segment on the young winos of L.A. It was a good one. Yeah, they were very good. I don't know if you hear our weekend show called The Tasting Room, which runs in L.A. on Sunday from 5 to 7 in the evening. But nice. uh, they're also going to make an appearance on there as well. Oh, that's awesome. I had a question real quick. Yeah. Um, I love red wines, and I'm just wondering how long will red wine stay fresh after you open it? Well, <laughs> wine is not about staying fresh, unless you're talking about certain kinds of wine like uh, the one from France called Beaujolais Nouveau or Gamay Beaujolais. Okay. Um, it's not about freshness. The it's about used, I don't yeah, know. yeah. Well, I mean, I, but I know what you're trying to say. What you're saying, how long will it stay good before it goes exactly. bad? And uh, the the answer is different for every kind of wine. Uh, from every kind of country, and it's really an individual, and, and that's what makes wine complicated for people. But I can give you some general guidelines. One is uh, uh, most white wines that Americans buy, unless you're a wine speculator or unless you're a wine you know, aficionado, uh -huh. are meant to be drunk the day you buy them or like the week you buy them. Uh, you can keep them a month and drink them in a month or even six months, but most people don't. The average person drinks a bottle of wine within 36 hours after buying it in the United States. So that's how long you'll store that. White wines, drink them now. What's okay. the most expensive bottle of wine you ever bought? Me, personally, I'd probably 35 maybe 40 bucks. 
Don't be storing that. Yeah, I drink that right away. Right. And uh, red wines, uh, that's really where you get into uh, a variety of answers. Um, but uh, there are certain wines, and again, it uh, depends on the quality of the wine and where it comes from and how it's made. Yeah. And, and it would help to look at a website like winespectator.com or Robert Parker, the wine critic, uh, is uh, he's got the Wine Advocate. It's okay. a publication, and his website is erobertparker.com. And he, you can put in the name of a wine, and you can ask that. You know, it would not ask the question. It's a database. But he'll tell you in there when you should drink it. Very nice. So these are – this is just a starting point. Wine is one of my favorite subjects because no one's an expert. You can never know enough. And no matter how much people think I'm an expert on wine, I'm always learning new things. I'm always being proven wrong about things I believed. So I tell people don't ever feel stupid. Uh, just keep tasting as many wines as you can. Very good. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everything you do, Tom. Thank you, Kevin. You take me out African tribal stuff? I certainly can. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge, 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 so finza. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Hey, got a question for you. I need help. Yeah. I need help with uh, online dating. Now, I go online. I read all these girls' profiles and everything, and everybody's the same thing. You know, I like to have a good time. You know, I like to laugh. You know, who doesn't like to laugh? Who doesn't like to have a good time? It's just what do you say on these things? I've been on there two weeks. I haven't had no luck at all. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what a, what a listener told me. Um, it was a little too complicated to actually demonstrate this on the air, so I'll just tell you what he told me. I heard from a listener who was 50 years old, 50, and he, um, to hear him tell it, he had the happiest marriage anybody ever had. His wife was the coolest chick ever, and he was as happy as he could ever be, and she died young after he was married to her for like 25 years. And so he has kids, nice guy, stable, wants to find love, and what he really wants to find is is a relationship that's like the one he had with his wife. He wants to settle down with another great woman. And he, he did, not looking to date around. He's not a player. And he said all these things in his uh, in his online profile. Right. Makes good money. So now that you've heard me describe the guy, you're thinking he'd be quite a catch for a lot of the 40-something, 50-something women on, on these uh, online dating sites, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, he got two responses. And they both rejected him. So do you know what he did? He's a listener. He changed his profile. Now, I don't have his letter in front of me, so I'm uh, I'm improvising here. But here's here's what he said. He changed the profile completely. He said, I'm a drunkard and a womanizer. I will only be seen with LA 9s and 10s. If you're less than a 9 or a 10, you can reserve the back seat of my vehicle. He said that uh, he's a complete player uh, and that uh, he's out every night of the week. And uh, uh, he would not be seen with a woman who's fat, no fatties. Uh, he just he put this down, by the way. He's not like this. He put it as an experiment. Uh, Do you know how many responses he got? Uh, Over 90 responses. Really? From everything from a Sunday school teacher to a grandmother. So they ate it up. They ate it up. He made yeah. it as offensive as he possibly could, and he was flooded with responses. Yeah, because, you know, it's like I put on there, you know, everything. I read all these girls' profiles, so I kind of put the same thing in mind, you know, thinking, well, you know, if, if they got some things in common. No, you but know, you, here's why you can't do that, okay? You have to remember, women will never admit to being horny. We read a survey on the air recently that said that at least 30% of the women who place online profiles have sex on the first date. Now, you've read these profiles I mean, some of these women have pictures of sunsets and puppy dogs and pictures of their kids in front of a Christmas tree. And they talk about finding soulmates and they don't want game players and they like to travel. 
But that's because women in our society feel that they just can't say, I'm horny and I want you to F me. So the thing is, they put that stuff down because they feel that's all a woman can say. But if 30% of those women are having sex on the first date, trust me, they're not looking to find somebody who, who's going to do all those things. They're looking to find somebody who's going to F them hard. Yeah. Yeah, they they, they say things like let's 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 walk hand in hand on the beach, let's go fly a kite together, let's look at sunsets. Thirty percent of those women are having sex on the first date. Mm -hmm. But that's that's not what they want to hear. Then they want to hear they want to hear that you know how you really feel. Then well, I, this guy told me that his response increased by like five thousand wow. percent when when he wrote that he was a womanizer, a player, a drunk. I mean, uh, I have to imagine uh, you could certainly experiment with that if your profile isn't working and see what happens. All right. Uh, you could also say, don't tell me about your baggage. I don't want to hear about your kids. I don't want to hear about your ex-boyfriend or your ex-husband. I don't care. You, you can make it as offensive as you want. You, you'll probably get more of a response, even if it's a negative. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Tom. I appreciate it, and I'll try it out, and uh, I'll let you know if it works. Give me a complete report, Jason. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm 42, and I'd love to bang an 18-year-old. That'd be great. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> yes. From a secret location, the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to say that, uh, first of all, we live in a diverse community, and sometimes I can't believe things people say. I'm offended beyond belief, and sometimes, I don't know, I mean, who do people think they're talking to? I mean, come on, don't you know who my friends are? Don't you know where my loyalties lie? Why would somebody say this to me? But just to give you an idea of how stupid some people are, I'm going to tell you what somebody just said to me. I'm thinking that I would be okay with it. Here's what they said. Somebody said to me the following. They asked me when, and again, I was so appalled when I heard this, when does a Mexican become Spanish? And before it hit me that they were telling me a joke, I said, I don't know. And the person said, when your daughter decides to marry the gardener. Yes, I was offended too. Carlos, were you offended by that joke? Was I? Yes. No, I'm not offended. I was checking because I was mortified. We're on the air, Carlos. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know that. I was going to ask you, uh, I was listening to Sean Hannity uh, earlier today, and he said you were, he was on the Phil Donahue show with you? Yes, he was. What were you, guys, what were you there for, just talking politics or what? We were uh, a panel of controversial talk show hosts. Oh, all right. Yeah, because uh, he had mentioned that, and I was just, you know, I, I listened to you, and I was thinking, you know, why, why would Tom be on the, be on the same time uh, Sean Hannity was on the well, I have known Sean Hannity since that day. Uh, we've known each other about 13, 14 years. Are you so, going to get along? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah. Be because in reality, what we have in common is being broadcasters. Right, right. I couldn't care less what his politics are. Yeah. He he's good on the radio. He's successful like I am. He's made a good business out of it like I have. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and so we have things in common that wouldn't be obvious by tuning in. Right. I just, I just don't like the way he's constantly uh, trying to bring Obama down. You know, he's, he's got, I don't know what he's got against him, but he's well, really, really trying hard. To... He's doing a conservative political radio show. And that's what a political conservative should be doing. Yeah, but to me, he's like really overdoing it a little bit. But that's well, my but, but you want to know something? I don't do a political talk show most of the time. Yeah, I know. But let me tell you a little. Let me tell you a little secret about radio. 
okay? Sure. Forget politics for a second. Uh, there's no such thing as going too far. Here's when you've gone too far, when you have offended your target audience. Okay. I know. I'm, that's just my opinion because I'm not. No, no, I understand that. But you hear what I'm saying? I'm, I'm speaking now for, about the radio business. Right. Going, here's what going too far means. Going too far means there's a certain audience you're trying to attract, and you offended them. You're not in his target audience. What, what's his target audience? Uh, rich white people? Rich white people. Old rich white people. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the old. Yeah. Well, that's You're what right. it is. But, but the thing is, that's the audience. By the way, I'm not criticizing him by saying that. It's uh, AM radio. It's largely on AM radio stations. Right. It's, it's a very popular program with that audience. And he makes a lot of money. And, yeah, he does. and, and I've known Sean for years. He's as honest as the day is long. Uh, he's uh, as good a friend as you could have. Uh, he's a great drinking buddy. We have sat and uh, drunk uh, copious amounts of expensive red wine together. What about Bill O'Reilly? No, Bill O'Reilly, I think, is a snake. <laughs> uh, and, and any guy who doesn't know the difference between a falafel and a loofah should read a book. <laughs> All right, Tom, can you kick me out uh, client number nine? Client number nine style, here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Plus, uh, Bill O'Reilly took a swipe at me in one of his books. F him. F him. What did you do with that intern, Bill? We never got the answer to that question. I just have to wonder how much money he must have had to pay to keep her quiet. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, this is Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. That's good. I have a question. Uh, it's something I've always wondered. I'm sure probably many of your listeners have also. I want to know what's your top, maybe three or top five of hottest chicks. What is your right now? Well, let me start with this. Um, my list of hot chicks is not your list. And the reason is because, for me, the hottest chicks are not in magazines or in movies or reality shows. Uh, the hottest chicks I've ever seen have been waitresses at expensive restaurants, makeup counter girls at Bloomingdale's. And I've seen hot chicks at Ralph's, man, at the register. Yeah, dude, I, I see that, I mean, all day. I work for Budweiser, and I'm at different stores every day. And, I mean, you'd be surprised some of the girls I see out here. And and let me tell you something. If if you're like me and you, you like uh, Hispanic women, yes. I, I, why would you waste your time thumbing through the pages of Maxim when you could uh, just get along the 60 freeway and stomp off at any Ralph's or Food for Less and see hotter chicks than you would ever see in Maxim? Yeah, and and they have way better personalities than these stuck up chicks on in magazines and TV and everything. That's exactly right. So, okay, I just wanted to know. I mean, just got your opinion. I mean, I already, I always knew that you like Latina girls, but yes. just wanted to ask. I do indeed, Daniel. Can you blow me up, Tom? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Kyrie, on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Kyrie. A good Friday to you, sir. Indeed. Now, an all-white radio station would work if you were stuck maybe up in uh, the Klansman capital of the world, which is Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yeah, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, or uh, or uh, Ketchum, Idaho. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, so so it could work, but not down here in SoCal. Oh no. Word. No, and I'm telling you, there's going to be bus. There's going to be bus ads with pictures of the Black Crows and Bruce Springsteen going through, like you know, Central Avenue, Slauson. Yeah, I'm going I'm to uh, tell you my picture of Tom Metzger. <laughs> Tom Metzger for Compton, Compton City Council. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom, will you please take me out, African tribal style, with a bong head? I will indeed, Kyrie. Here you go.
No cough. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Father. Hello, son. How you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Love it. Long time, first time, buddy. Thank you so much. A few things for you. Not really offended by those, let's just say, stupid, stupid joke. That's what it is. Stupid joke. Oh, stupid. Yeah, I'll tell you why. There's so much ignorance in this world, Father. And, uh, I, I, there's so I, much ignorance in the world. That's how I became a multimillionaire. <laughs> nice. If, 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 if our community ever goes up five IQ points, I'm a dead man. Let me tell you something, Father. I'm a, I'm a proud Mexican, 29 years old. I do outside sales. I sell to their so-called target audience, white folk, Mission Viejo, Laguna Hills. So much ignorance out there. Let me tell you, I experience it on a daily basis. But you know what I do? I laugh. When they tell their little jokes, I laugh at them. That hurts the most. Yeah. I don't play, I don't play into it. I laugh with them, you know, and, 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 or laugh at them, I should say. And they hate it. What are you laughing at? Or, you know, I'll get them back. So, in other words, they were trying to offend you. They were trying to, 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 to put you off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it happens. It and happens. Then, they're up, then they're upset when it doesn't work. Oh, yeah. And when I turn the table and I'll tell a white joke, they might get offended. And then I'll laugh. I'll turn it. And, and, it's, and it's so funny, Tom. So funny. So that, that's where I get off. So I, you know, I used to take offense. Being younger, I used to take offense. But now I don't take offense because the world is filled with so much ignorance. And you're still making your money selling to these people that are your customers. Uh, oh yeah, I love you get you get you Italian. get the last laugh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because all the all their money is going in my pocket. I get paid on commission. It's great, <laughs> great. Second thing for you, that pussy guy you you were talking to the chef that's taking care of uh, two dummy babies for some girl. right. Yes. Oh my God, Tom. What, what was that guy's name? Pussy. What was that guy's name? What was that guy's name? Special Ed. I don't know. He, he, needs, he needs to go back to Chicago where he came from. That is so freaking sad. Yes. But anyways, he's, he's the pussy, not me. I'm actually the breadwinner of the family. I watch the old lady do everything. And I must say, Tom, I have an 11-year-old boy. I make him listen to you. So he doesn't make the same mistake you made at 17? No. Let me tell you, because I learn from my mistakes. Uh, I do what I want. My old lady's cool with it. But I make my son listen to you, and he doesn't want to all the time, but I make him. Because I tell him, son, when you're 18, you don't need no girl. That's right. So he loves you, Tom, let me tell you. Sounds good to me. Uh, can you take me out, uh, screaming orgasm, followed by mariachi style, please? I certainly can. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Mary on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Yes. I just had a quick question for you. Do you ever date big girls? Do I ever date big girls? Yeah, and I'm not asking for myself, but I'm not, I'm asking. Do you ever date big girls? Well, um, now that I'm at this level uh, of uh, financial success, I don't have to do that anymore. Okay. I think every man out there yes, listening. No, you won't date big girls. Well, I don't have to. Oh, shoot. I mean, big girls are for poor people. <laughs> really? Of course. How many big girls? Other, Pierce Brosnan accepted. How many big girls are married to successful guys? You think about that. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.